Yes, so um, uh, gastroscopy, a uh, camera test of the stomach is traditionally performed through the mouth. Um, uh, but because uh, we are designed to protect the back of the throat, the larynx and the pharynx, and we are designed to have what we call a gag reflex, hence why if you put something at the back of your throat, you tend to gag. Uh, and uh, it is no wonder that although this gastroscopy is a very, very common procedure, it's one of the commonest procedures performed um, in gastroenterology, it, is still, uh, it still remains one of the most uncomfortable. Why? Because even though we spray the back of the throat with local anesthetic spray and we give sedation, we're constantly stimulating the gag reflex and hence why it is so uncomfortable for patients. So in 1984, almost serendipitously, uh, Professor Reza Shaka uh, in the States in Wisconsin, um, uh, while examining the uh, areas here in patients who have suffered strokes, uh, and the best route to do it was through the nose, realized that uh, he could do a gastroscopy through the nose and the patients were much more comfortable. And this is how transnasal endoscopy was born. And uh, it is no wonder, because if you anesthetize the, the nose with a special local anesthetic spray, uh, it usually contains a decongestant as well, um, we're able to pass a very, very fine instrument. It is much slimmer than a standard scope. A standard scope is about one centimeter, so like my finger. But this is literally a very slim, thing like this wire almost uh, and essentially we are able to pass it through the nose and by passing through the nose we are avoiding the area where the gag reflex gets stimulated and go directly down and this can done can be done without sedation in the vast majority of cases it's done without sedation in fact it obviates the need for sedation there's no need for sedation the patient is in control and um, uh, they can speak to you during the procedure because their mouth is free. They don't have a mouth guard and they don't have a scope down there. So the patient feels in control and it can be done with the patient uh, semi-seated upright. Uh, and, and it is a much more comfortable procedure for patients. In the year of COVID times, it is less aerosol generating. It's been shown to generate 50% um, less aerosols than, than uh, peroral gastroscopy, than the conventional route. Um, and uh, the instruments have evolved tremendously over the past years, um, uh, especially with the Fujifilm scopes, which offer um, uh, very, very uh, high quality images with the super CCD chips, almost high definition images. Uh, so pathology can be seen. Um, uh, we are able to wash the lining to be able to see more, and we are able to take biopsies. Uh, so it is um, uh, by far uh, a much more comfortable test without the need for sedation. Um, uh, and uh, it, is, it is just as good, if not sometimes better than a standard gastroscopy. So this is why uh, although I was a pioneer with this um, here in this country, we started doing this in 2006-2007. Um, uh, now the whole country has uh, really um, uh, become very excited about it. COVID was the push because it uh, reduces the need for personnel in the room. The patient is comfortable, no need for sedation, no need for recovery, and just as effective. So now we are expanding throughout the whole of the country with transnasal endoscopy. I'm very proud to have been at the forefront of this from the very beginning. It's already standard in Japan and in other countries, and here it is really becoming um, uh, uh, the way forward. So really, um, we are very proud to have it at the Wellington Hospital as well. So a transnasal endoscopy is extremely safe. Um, uh, it is much more comfortable than a standard endoscopy and doesn't need sedation. Um, of course, because we pass through the nose, there's a very tiny risk of a nosebleed. It very, very rarely happens and that can be controlled. Um, uh, of course, it's a procedure, so there will be a slight degree of discomfort, usually a bit of pressure here and the pressure here. I've had it done several times myself, so I can speak um, uh, from the patient's standpoint. Um, but many a time, um, the procedure is very, very safe and comfortable. Of course, when we're looking into the stomach, we need to insufflate with a bit of carbon dioxide. So you, there might be a bit of bloating, but there's no real pain because we anesthetize the nose with this local anesthetic spray. And we also spray the throat. And usually it's a very comfortable procedure. And if there's any discomfort, we deal with it there and then by applying more local anesthetic.
the risks of a transnasal endoscopy are very small, like any procedure, of course, there's small risk of making a tear in the bowel, causing bleeding or causing an infection, extremely unlikely because it goes through the nose. There's a small risk of making, uh, causing a nosebleed, but that's um, uh, very, very small. The risk is quoted to hover around 2% or even less in practice. Uh, and these are not things that are very, very dangerous. And because the, the scope is very slim and floppy, it's extremely unlikely to cause um, harm itself. Um, uh, but of course, we always consent for uh, these and discuss this in the pre-procedural consultation before the patient goes ahead. The procedure is very safe um, uh, and pain is, is not an issue uh, because we apply good local anesthetics. And as I said, and the patients have the benefit of uh, minimal gagging or, or no gagging at all vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, when compared to uh, an oral gastroscopy. Um, uh, and it takes about 15 to 20 minutes. And the beautiful thing about it is immediate recovery because you don't really need sedation. And as I said, the patient is in full control. They can speak to us during the procedure because their mouth and their tongue is free and mobile. So we're just bypassing it. So it's really, really the way forward for upper GI endoscopy, diagnostic upper GI endoscopy.